Hey, good morning. How's everybody? This is your very late weather report. And for those of you who don't know me, which I think everybody does, I'm Doc Robin McKay in the actualization zone. And I come live every, supposedly every Monday to give you the weather report for the week. I just had some technical difficulties at the beginning of the week and we're finally settled in um, one of our favorite places we, meaning my husband and me, as we are um, getting out of the heat of the desert and enjoying June gloom out here in California for a couple more days. So I wanted to finally get on and give you your weather report for the week. It's the last day of June. Holy smokes. Can you believe the first half of the year is over? Um, I want to share a story with you about something that I'm thinking about today. And I actually posted it in the actualization zone as kind of my message for the day about actualization. And I was thinking about this, and I'll tell you why I was thinking about it in a second, but the, the thing I posted was to ask yourself these questions. What am I tolerating? What am I settling for? Where am I spinning or feeling stagnant? And what do I think I'm confused about? So if you can answer those four questions, those are really important in turning things around in actualizing your greatest hopes and dreams more quickly because you need to get yourself into alignment. I think that's one of the major areas that we as high achievers struggle with is dropping ourselves out of alignment and um, by tolerating, by settling, by feeling confused, by feeling like we're spinning or that we're stagnant and kind of still waiting for a rescue, waiting for somebody to either tell us what to do or to pull us out of it. And I have news for you. No one's coming. And I don't mean that like no one's coming, like you don't have partners and you don't have people around you who love and support you, but you are the first cause of your experiences. So if you're feeling any of those things, you're the one who gets to turn them around too. It's a very empowering place to be, but it also can bump up against your sense of not wanting to take responsibility. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, but that, that can kind of happen sometimes when it comes to uh, moving forward on your greatest hopes and dreams. So answer those questions. And if you're feeling very daring today, you might even drop some of them into the comments and let us know so that we can see the opposite of that for you. There is a universal law, which is the universal law of polarity, which says that everything exists on poles. So if you're feeling, for example, confused about something, the opposite of that is going to be feeling clear about it. There are two sides of the same coin. You just happen to be looking on the wrong side of the coin. And I learned this a long time about, ago, by the way, about confusion, which is that confusion is actually a mind trick or a mind game that keeps us stuck. We say we're confused, but are you really? For me, usually when I'm feeling confused, it's because I'm not letting myself have something that I really, really want. It can be, and plus I have ADHD on top of it, so then then there, there gets to be overwhelm in, there, in the mix too. But when I even sit down at a restaurant to order something, if I feel confused, it's automatically, I know to look now to say, okay, what do I want that I'm telling myself that I can't have? And usually therein lies the answer. I'm not actually confused. It's that I'm not allowing myself to have the thing that I most desire. So whether it's, I don't eat cheeseburgers anymore, but you know what I mean? Like if you're not letting yourself have something that you're desiring, then you're actually kind of gaslighting yourself in some way, kind of telling yourself that you don't need it or that you're confused about it. And if you weren't confused about it, then you wouldn't want that thing at all. So take a look at those things for yourself and let us know, where are you holding yourself back? Where are you misaligned with regard to your greatest hopes and dreams? The answers are often in those, in those questions. So with that, oh, I wanted to tell you why, why I brought that up because I'm sitting here in this beautiful location, but this was not always the case this week. We, my husband and I spend quite a bit of time actually on the West Coast in the summertime. Just, um, we work from home and 
Uh, we like to come out here and get out of the heat, as I've said, because it really literally is like 900 degrees in, in Phoenix right now. So a couple weeks ago, we were in Laguna and we decided that we would go back to Laguna and we usually do Airbnbs or VRBOs. It's very difficult to find a VRBO within a very short period of time, within two weeks notice. And so my husband found one that we thought would be a good fit for us um, to come back, which is where we stayed for the first couple of nights we were here. And y'all, it was a sweet little place, by the way. She, the owner put in fresh flowers. She put in our favorite coffee creamers. It had beautiful white sheets on the bed, white towels, like very beachy, very sweet, renovated little condo. So it wasn't that, it was, she did the very best that she could with what she had to work with. But here's what, what we had to deal with, which was that this condo complex was built on a very steep hill, which was one way. And every time we'd pull into our parking spot and then my husband would have to back out and almost hit the trash cans behind us, do a K-turn, back all the way out, do another K-turn and then finally get out and then go down this really long hill. And I would hold on for dear life on the, like like that would do anything, right? But I would hold on for dear life on the, the handles of, on the car to protect, protect myself from <laughs> the roller coaster ride that we were on. It was small, it was a little bit cramped and it didn't have air conditioning in the bedroom. So by the time night three rolled around and we're both sweating in bed and tossing and turning because it was um, pretty warm and stuffy in, in the bedroom. And by the way, a lot of California condos don't have air conditioning. They just re rely on the sea breeze. And for some reason, we just weren't getting it. So at dinner a couple nights ago, my husband said, I just really wanna get out of here. We've got a few more days. I wonder if we can find something different. And I said, why don't you call or why don't you email our friend over at our favorite resort and just see if she's got any like last minute rates or anything like that. And it turns out she did. So she offered us a very good, very, very good VIP rate. And here we are, we packed up very quickly and headed over to our favorite resort in Orange County. It's like my whole body just breathed a sigh of relief. But here's the thing, I was gonna be willing to settle for and to tolerate something just for one more night, just for one more night. I could do it for one more night. We can do anything for one more night, can't we? And I'm always grateful for my husband because his tolerance for mediocrity is probably much less than mine is. He doesn't tolerate that well at all. He um, always encourages me to up level into next level of experience. And so what I learned from that is that you, I have to constantly be paying attention to what am I settling for? What am I tolerating? I wasn't confused by that. I knew that it probably wasn't the best idea. And here's what we learned in the end as we kind of processed through that experience was that that condo, lovely as it was, would have been really great if we would have been millennials who were living in New York City in a very small, you know, midtown apartment and then come over to the beach and lived in this very small condo on the beach. That would have been fine, but we're not millennials. <laughs> and the place that we live in ordinarily has some expansiveness to it. It's got an open floor plan. It's got some spaciousness to it that this place just didn't have. So it's just, you know, it just wasn't a great fit for us as appreciative of, as I was of the, the host having all of the details cared for. So, you know, you can make the best of a, a bad situation, certainly, but if there's a way out, if there's a way up, then see about that. See what you can do about taking, taking the elevator up, just moving, moving up to, moving your consciousness up to a place where you're no longer having to tolerate or settle or be confused about or spin about or be stagnant in the energies. So that's the message for the day. And I am shuffling as we're talking. So let me just tell you, the energy is going into, we've just had the full moon, or sorry, we've just had a new moon a couple of days ago. So this is new creation energy that's coming in. And, ooh, this one. Oh, I love this one. Oh, you guys are gonna love this one. Um, the scarab, beetle spirit. I dreamed of this scarab beetle spirit one time, a long time ago. It was early in my spiritual transformation. The message on the scarab is magic works through you. 
and you know the scarab is Egyptian but in my and in my dream a long time ago I in my dream I saw it coming in and coming up into my occiput that little um, region in the back of my skull where it the spine inserts into the skull and I took that as such a powerful message from my unconscious about what was happening for me which was awakening the magic in me so so this is where we're at right now the magic lives in you and this is why I think it's so important for us to take a look at what are the things that are blocking my magic. Settling for, tolerating, feeling confused by, spinning, stagnating. What are the things that are getting in the way of my magic? So that's our first card for right now. Magic works through you. Remember that. Write that down. Magic works through me. The second card is this one. You guys, this is the best reading ever. <laughs> Hawk spirit. By the way, when we came into our room yesterday, my husband came out on the veranda where I'm sitting doing this this live today, and we look, he looked out and there was a hawk just right over there. He's like, Robin, come and look at the hawk. We love hawks in our family. Um, the hawk spirit, let spirit be your guide. One of my teachers said a long time ago, the hawk will show you the way. The hawk is a messenger. It points in the right direction. So let spirit be your guide. In other words, let your intuition, your intuitive intelligence, just really come forward and steer your ship now. Now is the time to put your logic, put your intellect in the passenger seat. And you can let her know when you need her. Give her like a crossword puzzle to do or Sudoku or you know a Rubik's Cube whatever I don't care give her something to do but let spirit be your guide let your higher self guide you let the Holy Spirit in you guide you on this day and on all days moving forward Hawk spirit it's so funny I'm at the you know I'm at the ocean right now and we were just on the on the water yesterday on a whale watching tour we didn't see any whales but we did see a ton of dolphins I'll remember to post a video I got a video a, a dolphin leaping out of the water is amazing um, but today we have another water animal here which is turtle spirit turtle spirit says slow and steady wins the race The intellect and the ego want things to happen in the now. And it would make sense because as creator beings, if, as visionaries, we can actually see things, see what's possible in the now. And when we open our eyes after imagining what's possible, it's not there yet, we can feel disappointed. In fact, I believe it's the intellect and the ego who feel immensely disappointed because the intuition your connection with divine source energy is wise enough to know that there's a process of becoming. And you can quicken the process of becoming the version of yourself that has the thing that you want to do to be or to have. But it's not always instantaneous. It's not like I dream of Jeannie, you know, blink it and it, it appears usually. Sometimes it, it works that way, depending on how close you are to being that version of yourself depending on how much interference there is with the things that you have some semblance of control over to manage, like what you're tolerating, settling for, confused by, spinning about, stagnating in. But the turtle spirit is here just to remind us that it's the slow and steady. It, and by the way, slow doesn't mean like you're in last place, it just means plotting it just means keep going just keep going even when and especially when you can't see any evidence in your physical reality that the thing that you desire is coming forward that's especially when it's important if you have an ADHD brain like I do that's a tough one because there is that impulse that impulsivity to you know push the river to move things along to muscle your way through and intellectually you can do that you always have been able to do that but now is the time to give that aspect of yourself a break 
just maybe even retire her, send her to the beach and have her drink Mai Tais for a while or something, whatever, fruity drinks on the beach. And give spirit, give your intuition an opportunity to take full command of your life and of the creations that you are calling forward into your life. It's like that peaceful, when I think about slow and steady, it just feels more peaceful, even solitary, a little bit solitary. I'm just, I hope you're getting that. I'm kind of telepathically transmitting that, that spirit of that slow and steady turtle spirit. And then the last one is this one. Oh, another of my favorites is coming up today, giraffe spirit. When I was like sixth grade, there was this kid named Ben Jabrick in my sixth grade class. He was so short. Oh my God, he was tiny. And I was the tallest one in the class. I was as tall as I am now and probably weighed a hundred pounds. Um, and um, he would call me giraffe. He'd say, how's the weather up there, giraffe? And I'd tell him, you know, I'd call him shorty. And it, we had, a, it was kind of a fun thing that we did. But anyway, giraffe is one of my favorite animals. And this, this message from giraffe is to see the big picture. So while we have turtle, very grounded, energetically just pacing, we've got now giraffe reaching up, up reaching high up over the brush and over the tallest trees to be able to see kind of the meta level of what's going on in your life. What's going on in the world? What's going on with your creations, those heart's desires that haven't quite materialized yet? And when you can rise up using, just imagine if you were a giraffe, you're chomping on some leaves at the top of the tallest trees, and then you can look up and you can see the horizon and you can see what's coming. And you might even be able to see the ships that you've called in those new creations that are speeding their way toward you. You might be able to see that new position that's perfect for you or that amazing new client that you've been calling in or group of clients or that amazing new relationship. You'll be able to see it when you look at big picture. And then the, the trick is see the big picture, hold your vision on the big picture, but stay in your body because when you're emotionally intelligent, when you're an intuitive person, there is a tendency to be, not just a tendency, but a capability of being able to come out of your body, speed your way to meet the ships on the horizon. And now that big part of your consciousness who's responsible for creating is clear out to sea with the creations. And your body's left going, what, what just happened? And then you start feeling depleted and you start feeling depressed or anxious or worried or scared or confused. And you start to feel very out of alignment. So, so once you see the vision, once you see the big picture, drop back into your physical body. Your physical body is the vehicle through which everything that you desire gets manifested. If you are not fully in your body, that manifestation, that goal, that heart's desire that you long for, that you hope for, that you dream of, doesn't have a place to land. It doesn't have a landing pad. You've got to stay in your body. So the way you stay in your body is not just to build your the bridge from your head to your heart, which is what I always say, but it's build the bridge also from your head to your heart, to your belly, to your hips, all the way down to your feet and anchor your feet even into the earth grids. And I know that sounds so like sci-fi, but it's such a good image, I think. Just anchor yourself into this here and now moment, even as you can see from giraffe perspective, what's to come, what's to come in the future. All right. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. Let us know in the comments what your major takeaways are what your ahas were. I'd love to hear from you, whether you're watching live like Holly is. Hi, Holly. Or you're watching the replay. Let us know. And I will see you. Actually, it's going to be next Tuesday because we were celebrating Independence Day here in, in America, so I won't be online on Monday. So I will see you on Tuesday for the next weather report. Big love.